um, Wednesday, May 31st, 6.30 to 8 at the Murray Pretlow Library. That's on 111 West Ocean View Avenue. Monday, June 5th, 6.30 to 8 at the Lambless Point Community Center, which is 1251 West 42nd Street. Thursday, June 8th, 6.30 to 8, the Norview Community Center, 6380 Sewell's Point Road. And finally, on Monday, Mar uh, June 12th, from 6.30 to 8, at the Southside Aquatic Center at 1750 Campostella Road. For the benefit of those who are here this afternoon, and those that may be watching uh, on the TV, we wanted you to be aware of that. And please, uh, zoning affects us all, so if there are any concerns or questions you might have, we encourage you all to please try to attend one of those sessions between now, uh, May 31st and June 12th. We'll make that announcement again at, as we close our meeting. With that, Lenny. All right, Mr. Hales. Here. Here. Ms. Austin. Here. Mr. Halchins. Here. Mr. Murphy. Here. Ms. Shelton. Here. Dr. Newman. Here. Mr. Fraley. Good. Here, thank you, Lenny. Uh, regular agenda item one. First item before you today is Taco Bell for a special exception. Operate a commercial drive through at 2469 East Little Creek Road. Thank you, Lenny. Uh, here to speak in favor of this application, uh, Mid Atlantic Taco LLC, Al Warnick. Did I get that right, sir? Close enough, sir. It's Al Warnick. Warnick. But no problem. I actually was only planning on speaking if I needed to. But uh, the store has been there for, I think, close to 40 years with a drive through being operated. And we just want to remodel the, the building, bring it up to 2017 standards and appearance and inside functionality. This is not going to cause the quality of the tacos to drop, is it? No, sir. Okay. And Thank we won't you. raise prices either. All right. Was, that was my next question. <laughs> I assume that might be coming up soon, but from somebody at least. So that's all we have to say about the situation. Thank you. Any questions of Mr. Warnick? No. Just give us your name and mailing address for, for the record here, if you don't mind. Uh, it's it's Mid Atlantic Taco LLC as the owner of the of the restaurant two four three four Gum Road, Chesapeake, Virginia two three three two one is oh, is the address for the company. I'm sorry. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Lenny. The motions to recommend that the special exception be approved, subject to conditions contained in the staff report. Mr. Hales. Aye. Ms. Austin. Yes. Mr. Houchins. Aye. Mr. Murphy. Aye. Ms. Shelton. Yes. Dr. Newman. Aye. And Mr. Fraley. Aye. We we'll make Aye. that recommendation to council. Good luck. The next item is 13th Bay Tattoo for a special exception to operate a tattoo parlor school at 3201 East Ocean View Avenue, Suite 103. Thank you, Linda. The chair acknowledges no opposition to this application. We do want to acknowledge uh, Alan Sullivan is here to answer any questions, does not wish to speak. Uh, also here to answer questions, Todd Lovelace. And finally, uh, also uh, help me out. I think this probably was an oversight. Uh, there is no opposition to this application, right. Lenny. The motions to recommend that the uh, special exception be approved subject to the conditions contained in the staff report. Mr. Hales? Aye. Ms. Austin? Yes. Mr. Halchins? Aye. Mr. Murphy? Aye. Ms. Shelton? Yes. Dr. Newman? Aye. And Mr. Fraley? Aye. We'll make that recommendation to council. Good luck. Item number three, R.D. Wilhelm Distributing, Distilling, sorry, <laughs> company for a special exception to operate a micro distillery at 1120 West Olney Road. I'm sure there'll be a lot of distribution going on there, Lenny. <laughs> um, uh, here, uh, the, the applicant, Mr. Dornman. 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 You have anything you want to share with us, sir? There is no opposition. Answer, answer any questions if you have them. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Any questions, comment, commissioners? Lenny. The uh, motions to recommend that the special exception be approved subject to the conditions contained in the staff report. Mr. Hale? Aye. Ms. Austin? Yes. Mr. Halchins? Aye. 
Mr. Murphy? Aye. Ms. Shelton? Yes. Dr. Newman? I'll be excited to have you in Chelsea. I say aye. Aye. Mr. Fairley? Aye. We'll make that recommendation to council. Good luck to you. Thank you. All right. Number four is famous Uncle Al's Hot Dog and Grill. For a special exception, operated an eating and drinking establishment at 1269 North Military Highway, suite number five. Thank you, Lenny. The chair acknowledges there is no opposition to this application. All right. The motion before you is to recommend that the special exception be approved subject to the conditions contained in the staff report. Mr. Hales? Aye. Ms. Austin? Yes. Mr. Houchins? Aye. Mr. Murphy? Aye. Ms. Shelton? Yes. Dr. Newman? Aye. And Mr. Fraley? Aye. We'll make that recommendation to council. Good luck. Item number Item five. five, 905 on the Bay for a special exception to operate an eating and drinking establishment with alcoholic beverages at 905 East Ocean View Avenue. Thanks, Lenny. There is no opposition to this application. Chair acknowledges uh, Kakunas. If you got anything to share with us, sir, the microphone is yours. No, if you need it, it's, uh, it's a nice uh, little restaurant, family restaurant from the area. Mm -hmm. And a uh, big uh, number of uh, customers. We have already two menus, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Right. And uh, they want to have the wine for the fish and right. the blood made for the brunch. Sure. So, uh, you brought this trouble on yourself by coming to the microphone. You're going to have to give us your name and mailing address. My name is Ioannis Kokolis. And your mailing address? My mail address is JD. My email address is 905 East Ocean View Avenue, mm -hmm. Norfolk, Virginia. Thank you, sir. 3503. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Lenny, you. no opposition to this application. Commissioners, any question? The uh, motions recommend that the special exception be approved subject to the conditions contained in the staff report. Mr. Hales? Aye. Ms. Austin? Yes. Mr. Houchins? Aye. Mr. Murphy? Aye. Ms. Shelton? Yes. Dr. Newman? Aye. And Mr. Fraley? Aye. We'll make that recommendation to council. Good luck. Number six is Little Dog Diner for a special exception to operate an eating and drinking establishment at 1917 Collie Avenue. Thanks, Lenny. Uh, the chair acknowledges no opposition to this application. Uh, and I think I heard earlier that we did get letters of endorsement from the Ghent Business Association as well as the Ghent Neighborhood League. Uh, we do want to acknowledge the applicant, uh, Mike Basham. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, but there is no opposition, Lenny. The uh, motion is to recommend that the special exception be approved subject to the conditions contained in the staff report. Mr. Hales? Aye. Ms. Austin? Yes. Mr. Houchins? Aye. Mr. Murphy? Aye. Ms. Shelton? Yes. Dr. Newman? Aye. And Mr. Fraley? Yes, we'll make that recommendation to council. Good luck. Moving along, number seven, California Burrito for a special exception to operate an entertainment establishment with alcoholic beverages at 319 Granby Street. Thank you, Lenny. The chair acknowledges no opposition to this application either. Do want for the record to include the names of Miguel Rodon. Okay. As well as Wayne. Help me out, Wayne. Harrison, thank you, sir. Uh, there is no opposition. All right. The motion before you is to recommend that the special exception be approved subject to the conditions contained in the staff report. Mr. Hales? Aye. Ms. Austin? Yes. Mr. Houchins? Aye. Mr. Murphy? Aye. Ms. Shelton? Yes. Dr. Newman? Aye. And Mr. Rayleigh? Aye. We'll make that recommendation to council. Good luck. Um, number eight, unplugged for a special exception to operate an entertainment establishment with alcoholic beverages at 804 Granby Street, Suite A. Uh, chair would want to acknowledge Michael Madison and a Mr. Welch. Okay, there is no opposition to this application, but thank you for being here, Lenny. The motions recommend that the special exception be approved subject to the conditions contained in the staff report. Mr. Hales. Aye. Ms. Austin? Yes. Mr. Houchins? Aye. Mr. Murphy? Aye. Ms. Shelton? Yes. Dr. Newman? Aye. And Mr. Fraley? Yes. We'll make that recommendation to council. Good luck. 
Uh, new business, uh, the Nisha Joining Text Amendment to incorporate a new and modified actions text and maps based on recommendations from April 2017, Briennial Evaluation of Plan Law for 2030. Ms. Paula Shea. I'll see the interns. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, this is uh, to amend Plan Norfolk to um, incorporate those findings we had from last month where we went through the status of the plan. So I just want to run through really quickly in general what we're recommending be amended. Uh, the first thing is to better incorporate Vision 2100 throughout the plan. We are adjusting and adding actions, maps, language, so that we make sure we reference Vision 2100 when we make our land use determinations and decisions using the plan. So we just want to work it throughout the plan. Uh, the second thing is to uh, make sure we ad adopt existing pattern books that we currently use, that staff uses to evaluate different applications, that we incorporate those in um, by reference into Plan Norfolk. The third is to add recommendations um, that were from the citywide affordable housing study, um, basically uh, reflecting the two goals that are in that come from that uh, plan, which are to strengthen neighborhoods throughout the city and deconcentrate clusters of poverty. Uh, we have um, a couple of new policies and plans that have come along over the last two years that we want to better incorporate uh, throughout Plan Norfolk uh, to use for decision making. Virginia's uh, Working Waterfront Master Plan, APA Policy Guide on Freight, and the Hampton Roads Hazard Mitigation Plan. So we have some actions we're adding from them. Uh, and then based on kind of what we hear when we're in our meetings every month and the comments you bring up and things that we need to add to the plan to give us better guidance are things like um, potential parking solutions in our neighborhood commercial areas, something we deal with all the time, design and location criteria for public facilities, and guidelines for the creation and reuse of local landmarks. And then just some general cleanup based on two years. We've added historic districts. We've uh, added transportation projects, things like that, that we want to make keep the plan as current as possible. And that's it. Paula, while you're there, mm -hmm. uh, our requirements are to review every two years and update every five is... It's actually the only requirement, the state requirement, is every five years review and determine if it's still valid. Okay. We, in, as an action in the plan, we said we would review it every two years. That's right. one of our implementation items. Okay. Thank you, Paula. Any questions of Ms. Shea? Chair, we entertain a motion to initiate a text amendment in accordance with the guidelines. Ms. Shea just laid out, laid out for us. Mr. Chair, I'll make that motion. Second. Been properly moved and second to initiate a text amendment to incorporate new and modified actions, text plans, policies, and procedures into the uh, plan law for 2030. Is there any unreadiness? Any unreadiness? Hearing none, those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Paula. Thank you. Item two on the new business. Uh, and these say another zoning text amendment. Uh, item 2A, to allow for a special exception, automobile storage in the I-3 General Industrial Zoning District. And item 2B, to amend section 13-6.7, communication antennae of the city's zoning ordinance to address small cell antennae as accessory structures to ensure compliance with recent changes in state law. Mr. Chairman, I suggest we take we, we divide that question and take them one at a time. Um, the first being the special exception for automobile storage in the I-3. Um, and then Mr. Melita has a brief presentation on the, the second item. Good idea, George. Thank you. Commissioners, um, we've had some dialogue on this in the past uh, with regard to uh, automobile storage in the I-3 General Industrial Zoning District. With any further comment with regard to that? Question, criticism, or suggestion. Hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion if someone is of a mind. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion if someone is of a mind to do so. And for a third time, the chair will ask if there is a motion to 
amend to allow for a special exception for storage of automobiles in I-3 industrial, general industrial area. Hearing none and no motion forthcoming, I submit that that uh, request dies. Uh, item 2B, to amend the communication antenna portion. That's Mr. Melita as a text amendment item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the uh, purpose of this text amendment is to uh, respond uh, at the local level to um, some changes that were made by the General Assembly during the most recent legislative session. Um, those changes would go into effect July 1st of this year, uh, and they relate to um, certain sorts of um, wireless communications um, infrastructure components, specifically um, small cell facilities and micro facilities. The new legislation from the state has several components to it, one of which uh, relates to uh, and limits the zoning powers that localities have. In order to understand the nature of those zoning rules that uh, come along with this bill, there are two definitions that you'll have to understand um, to, to appreciate what, uh, what the new law requires. The first definition First definition is a small cell facility. Um, I don't have a picture of what this looks like, but the concept is that there are a series of antenna and other components related to a wireless transmission of communications um, that would fit inside of a six cubic, six cubic foot volume um, uh, format. Um, there may be other components to that um, small cell facility um, that are needed to make it operate, and those uh, other components can uh, have a maximum volume of no more than 28 cubic feet. Um, so the total of these facilities is in the nature of not more than 34 cubic feet. There are a number of features that the uh, wireless company can add to the um, small cell facility that are not counted towards that enclosure, and those are um, listed on this slide, but they include things like an electric meter, concealment, uh, backup power systems, and switches. The other definition that you'll have to appreciate in order to understand what the new rule uh, requires of localities um, is, the is a specific definition for an existing structure. Um, this is essentially any sort of uh, structure that um, exists at the time that the request is being made for uh, by the telecom company um, that is capable of uh, holding up uh, a wireless service. Uh, and a wireless service is um, any sort of component of these uh, wireless facilities. So there are a lot of things that meet this definition. A few of them are listed. The most obvious ones that um, are included in the bill are utility poles, light poles, um, flag poles, buildings. Um, and of course, towers, whether they're uh, cellular towers or other sorts of towers. So understanding these two definitions, um, here's the basic new rule that um, is required by the state and which we will incorporate into the zoning ordinance by text amendment um, if the motion carries. Uh, localities cannot require any special uh, exception, any special use permit, or any variance in the event that a telecom company asks to uh, locate a small cell facility on an existing structure. Um, all they need to have is permission from the person who owns the structure, um, and they have to go through an application process to notify the locality that, that this is going to be installed. What the locality can do is administratively review that application to be sure it complies with the rules. Um, there are some limits in the bill that we would incorporate into the zoning ordinance about um, how many of these uh, facilities can be included in each application. Uh, there is permission for uh, fees to be charged, and those fees are capped, um, and we would uh, anticipate incorporating those into the zoning ordinance as well. The uh, new legislation creates what is called in the telecom industry a shot clock, so it requires that if a locality is going to do these administrative reviews and charge these fees. There is a limited period of time that they can have it under review. Um, and if the approval or denial is not issued within that limited period of time, 
then the application is deemed approved and the, um, the telecommunications installation can go, can go in even without getting the approval. The legislation restricts the grounds upon which these applications can be denied to just four purposes, uh, four, four reasons. Um, the four reasons are listed here. I'll try to summarize them for you, although we're not exactly sure what all of these mean because these, um, this bill hasn't really gone into effect yet, um, and it's hard to tell what these facilities look like because um, these are not um, appearing yet uh, in part of the telecommunications network of service. Some of them are related to what's being called now 5G or fifth generation uh, wireless service, but um, some of this information is still proprietary with the companies, and so we don't have a lot of information about exactly how big they are or how far apart they're located. Um, so the four reasons that a permit can be denied would be incorporated into the zoning ordinance, um, if there's interference with existing or planned communications, if there are issues with public safety or interference with public safety, um, on publicly owned property or publicly controlled property, um, the locality can have aesthetic requirements and if the application doesn't comply, it can be denied. And then finally, in historic districts, um, on historic structures or in other design controlled districts, um, the application can be denied if it doesn't comply with what's already required in the historic area. So the text, the text amendment we would ask for you to consider initiating would essentially um, grab those aspects of the new bill that relate to zoning and then incorporate them in Norfolk and include um, specifically with regard to issues like uh, it, uh, the aesthetic review, include exactly what standards the city is going to use to do that administrative review of the permits. Mm -hmm. um, so unless you have any questions, um, we'd ask uh, the, the commission to consider a motion for this text amendment. Adam, um, this goes, this law goes into effect July 1? Correct. Mm -hmm. Um, will will we get, I guess we'll have to, as this evolves, uh, some indication as to what these structures might be looking like? Um, the, the perm, assuming we have everything um, in place to have the permit process set up, um, then the permit applications will need to include um, enough information, um, including exhibits and drawings to understand exactly what these look like, how high off the ground they would be, how they would be position, positioned on any sort of these existing structures. Um, so until, but until we see those permit applications, I, I don't have that, yeah. I can't give you an idea. But um, in understanding this, uh, this 28 cubic feet for uh, the actual small cell facility is augmented by other things around it that can that is not considered a part of that so that the actual structure that you might be dealing with might be considerably larger than that there there's the six cubic foot device itself which right. for for lack of a better term is probably just the antenna component that's probably the part that needs to be positioned in a certain place to function in the network um, in a complementary way with other small cell facilities. That's the six cubic feet. The 28 cubic feet is part is related to that and can include other components that are necessary to run the antenna. So that may include some of the power system or some of the other switching features. Um, the definition says that not everything that's at the site is included in either the 6 or the 28. There are other kinds of things. Backup power was one of them right. um, that doesn't count. So really there are three piles of infrastructure that would have to be measured. <laughs> Some of them are excluded. Some of them have to fit into that 6 cubic foot box. And then there are a few things that can be cobbled together, but no more than 28 cubic feet. <coughs> Um, for yeah. all three <coughs> for the entire different installation. aspects. Right. And mm -hmm. at this point, we really don't know how much of that is on the ground, how much of that is on the pole, um, because we don't know exactly how these are laid out just yet. But again, we would uh, get that information if we have the permit scheme in place. Hmm. Any other questions of Mr. Molina, commissioners? Comment? Adam? Thank you. You're welcome. 
chair will entertain a motion as to whether or not we initiate the text amendment to include the uh, guidelines with regard to communications antennae and our planning zoning ordinance, rather. Well, Mr. Chair, since uh, this is obviously not ideal for us, uh, given the, how loose it is, but it is state law, so mm -hmm. with that in mind, we'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and make the motion to initiate the text amendment for the city zone ordinance to address small cell antennae as accessory structures to ensure compliance with recent changes to the state law. Second that, uh, echoing uh, Mr. Hale's statements. Thank you, Mr. Hales and Dr. Austin. Uh, commissioners, you heard the motion and the second. Is there any unreadiness? Hearing none, those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Oppose? Uh, we have us a text amendment, Adam. <laughs> Uh, that concludes our public our public hearing agenda. Um, any uh, thing that you need to add, Mr. Melita? No, sir. Uh, Mr. Homewood? No, sir. Uh, any comment from commissioners? I do want to reemphasize once again before we let everybody go, uh, the four meetings to be scheduled on the new zoning ordinance rewrite, uh, Wednesday, May 31st at Mary Pretwell Library, uh, Monday, June 5th at the Lambert's Point Community Center, Thursday, June 8th at the Norview Community Center, and Monday, uh, June 12th at the Southside Aquatic Center. All of those meetings will be held from 6.30 until 8. Uh, zoning impacts everything and everyone in the city in some way, shape, or form, so please try to attend one of those meetings, if at all possible. Uh, with that, I'll declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.